All right, guys, welcome back to the Sebart PC21 repair, crash repair uh, video series. This is video number three in the series, and uh, hopefully my, my vision for this is we get everything wrapped up in this video. Not sure if that's going to happen. We'll see how the video goes. So um, before we get any further, though, if this is your first time here watching the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And also give the video a thumbs up. All right, guys, so we got a lot of stuff to get done in this video. Uh, it's going to center around the turbine, mounting the turbine, uh, getting everything ready, mounting the turbine accessories, uh, cowl. We've got to we've got to sand the cowl, fill the cowl, sand the cowl, fill the cowl, sand the cowl, fill the cowl, paint the cowl. So there's a lot of work to do with the cowl. Uh, but not a lot of stuff for you guys to watch. So uh, then the last big thing is going to be uh, the last little miscellaneous things and the programming for the radio, which is pretty in-depth uh, because we're starting from square one. So anyways, guys, that's it. Without further ado, let's get into this video series, this last video in the series, and uh, let's go. Okay, guys, cowl has been sanded. Uh, now we just have to go in and fill everything. So we've got a couple low spots and stuff that we need to fill, but... Uh, we'll go in, fill that, uh, let that cure, and then we'll work on the turbine. And she's filled. Okay, guys, airframe's been flipped over. We are pretty much ready to put the turbine in, or the, uh, the turbo prop in. So the one thing we're going to have to do is make sure we've got all the lines and everything put on, because um, accessing this when it's in there is a little bit difficult. But uh, so it's kind of a coordinated effort here of, of putting the turbo prop in and uh, checking the lines. So I'm going to need to get a couple uh, pieces of the accessory equipment here and uh, just check that. So I'll get back to you guys here in a second. Okay, guys, so I uh, got some of the stuff laid out here. Part of the problem with redoing a plane like this is trying to figure out where things went. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. So the solenoid valves fit in the same hole. Back here we've got the fuel pump holes as well too. Um, the turbine controller, the ECU, I think went right there. And then the, uh, the UAT or the bubble trap went right there. So um, need to get a couple fittings here. I uh, try and always keep a good stock of these Festo fittings because you never know when you're going to need them and they're impossible to get locally. So anyways, we need a six to three millimeter adapter. So the UAT tank, the bubble tank sits like this. And then we've got uh, the six millimeter tubing, which is gonna go towards the fuel pump. And then we need a six mil to three mil adapter because the input on the, the fuel pump is three mils. So, or sorry, six to four mil adapter. And we're gonna use four mil tubing on the, uh, on the input. Uh, we've got all the Festo fittings from the install um, before here, and uh, so now basically it's just a matter of putting all this stuff into the, uh, the fuselage. Alright guys, one little key here and I'll show you is uh, when you're working with Festo tubing and the Festo fittings, the push fittings, uh, it's extremely important that your cuts on your tube are flat and square. So. Um, Tubing cutters are a great addition to your toolbox. Uh, I've had these for years and I've used them a lot. Uh, they come in handy tons and uh, super simple to use, but they make sure that your cut is nice and level. So when you insert that tubing into the fitting, it uh, is gonna seal properly. So little uh, good little tool, uh, tool there. I think I paid probably 25 bucks for these things, $25 or $20. So these are the SMC ones and they work great. All right guys, so I'm just hooking up all the extensions here to the turbine. So when, uh, or the turbo prop, sorry. Uh, so when this gets inserted, um, we don't have to fight with our hands in there. All the, the items are there and long enough. One little trick here for you guys with these MPX connectors. Uh, if you don't have any shrink tubing or any, uh, you can buy little connectors like the servo ones that clip these things together. Uh, usually, depending on how your wiring is done, a zip tie works perfect. You can just fit it right through the middle. Uh, strap it around doesn't need to be super tight, but it uh, keeps that nice and together I prefer that type of thing over tape because the tape generally will uh, Usually will come undone. So anyways connectors are all done 
and uh, ready to be inserted in the airframe. Okay guys, I am thankful that I took pictures when I first built this thing because I was trying to fit the UAT, the bubble trap, up here somewhere and I'm like, it just doesn't make sense because I remember putting the battery for the smoke pump there and things like that. So anyways, looked back at my pictures and the UAT was mounted back there and uh, it fit better back there for C of G purposes. So anyways guys, everything's plumbed um, from the UAT, the fuel pump, the uh, ECUs there, the solenoids and everything are plugged in. Here's the uh, turbine on and off, or fuel on and off valve. So essentially with that all done, we do still need to put tie wire on, the, or safety wire on the two uh, nipple fittings there. And um, so now what we can do is we can basically feed the turbine or the, uh, the turboprop into the airframe. And all of these things are long enough to plug into their uh, associated areas. The fuel lines will have to uh, trim, but uh, we're good to go with mounting the turboprop. All right, guys, so the, uh, the turbo prop's been temporarily mounted, I guess temporarily, um, meaning I've just put two of the bolts in, so uh, one on top, one on the bottom, and um, primary reason for this is I may have to take this back out once we put the cowl back on, so we'll see. But um, anyways, we've got uh, all the lines here to run now, and uh, so all the lines have been inserted, and um, so I'm just gonna route these obviously nicely. Now just a couple things to think about with this particular install. Um, we've got the two solenoids here. So you just wanna make sure obviously you're putting the right solenoid in, right? So that's pretty easy to figure out. We've just gotta chase this line um, to the gas valve. So we know the top solenoid is for the startup, right? Which is color coded for me anyways to this green green line so green line will go on top clear line will go on the bottom um, all the other plugins just simply go on the uh, the ECU in the appropriate spots and um, that'll be the turbine all connected so once the turbines connected um, we're pretty much ready to go there obviously we may have to do some final adjustments just with positioning and stuff uh, so again I'm not going to put the smoke nozzles back in until uh, the turbines in its final resting place and the nice thing about the split cowl is that we can put the bottom part on and uh, it still ac access everything through the top so um, but that's uh, that's the turbine installation so I'll show you a quick shot of this once it's all uh, inserted and finished Okay guys, so all the lines have been run. Uh, just one of the things that I needed to pay attention to here is I wanna obviously keep the lines out of this area so when the retract's working, uh, it's not interfering with any of those. So that was part of the reason that I ran them through the fuselage there. And um, leave a little bit extra on the, the fuel lines when possible. So if we do have to pull that turbine out, it uh, gives us a little bit of leeway without having to connect the fuel system or de um, disconnect the fuel system and uh, then all the lines are run on the, uh, the ECU. So initially I had the ECU kind of back here. Uh, I had to move it forward a little bit just so some of these connections would work. And um, so that's all done. <clears throat> now one of the last things that I do uh, or will do with the ECU is I take shoe goop. <clears throat> so the stuff here. So this stuff here, I call it shoe goop because that was, I think, the first version that came out. But anyways, it's goop. Um, and I will just put it on the connectors where they plug into the ECU. So just put a little bit right here, a little bit there, there, there. And that just prevents the connectors from pulling out. Uh, I do that on any plane that I own or build. Um, and then if you ever need to take those connectors off, you just peel up the shoe goop, uh, comes off with some force, but doesn't wreck anything. And I uh, do the same thing on receivers. Uh, you can see that I've done it here previously on the, uh, the gyro. Doesn't take much, but it just helps keep everything connected. Bondo on the cowl has uh, cured. Now we're gonna sand this out and uh, try and get it uh, as smooth as possible. If we have to do any more filling, we'll do that. But uh, that's the next step in the build here is getting this, uh, this cowl uh, progressing. All right, guys, cowl lower half has been all sanded out. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prep it off, clean it up, 
Um, I'm going to use the black line there as my termination point. And uh, then I'm going to spray it with primer. So that's uh, the next step. Uh, once the primer cures, we will have to do probably a fair bit of sanding, I think, just based on how this looks. Um, but I'll show you guys the progress here. All right, guys, so I put two layers of primer on here. I'll try and show you um, what we're doing when we're sanding this out. So when I'm done sanding this, probably most of the primer is going to be uh, gone. But uh, basically what we're doing is the primer helps to bring out the surface imperfections. So not sure if this will pick up on the camera, but stuff like this, like that. So there's a good, good chance that I'll have to sand all this. Um, then I'll uh, probably be priming it again. So I'm going to go take some uh, six or 800 grit sandpaper inside in the sink and wet sand this. And I'll show you guys the, uh, the finished product once that's done. Okay guys, and that's what it looks like sanded. Um, <clears throat> now that I've looked at this, it actually looks really, really good and I think we should be okay to put paint on it now. Um, so yeah, as you can see, a lot of the primer gets, uh, gets taken off, but what it does is it fills in all the little imperfections, uh, little grooves from sanding and things like that, and uh, helps to obviously get a good finish. All right, guys, I'll show you here how I do my soft switches or switches in general. Uh, I used to really struggle with these things on how to get them done properly. So what I would do now is find the spot I want them to be in, um, drill one of the bolt holes or screw holes out with the drill bit. And then you can put the, uh, the screw through, right? Uh, then you can get it nice and lined up and square and everything. Drill the other one out, put the other screw through. Now there's nothing on the underside of this. It's just the bare wood. And then <clears throat> what you do once you've got the right position is you take that same drill bit and you drill out the four corners, right, in the center. And now when you take all that stuff off, you're left with that. So now we've got the outline of the center part that we need to cut out or drill out for the actual switch. Uh, because of the thickness of this material, what I'm probably going to do is um, drill this stuff out, but uh, basically you just got to remove that stuff. And uh, with the four holes, we know exactly where we need to remove it for the switch. So just a little tip there on how I do my switches and uh, working on the board, obviously, right now and, and mounting the receivers and the switches and all that stuff. All right, guys, and that's the final product. So what I like to do is take my, uh, my step bit, step drill bit here. Uh, this is one of my skinnier ones and uh, just drill two spots in those uh, little holes that I uh, mentioned before. And then once that's done, I just take an X-Acto blade and then just basically cut out the area, uh, making it nice and square. Not a problem if it's too big. Um, obviously you want it to be uh, stay hidden underneath the, uh, the cover, but uh, that's how you do the switches. Well, that's how I do the switches anyways. All right guys, I have to approach things a little bit differently because the board is too thick for the switches. Um, if the switches are mounted on the board, the uh, little tab where you turn things on and off were actually recessed. You couldn't even touch them. So anyways, went about this a little bit differently. Cut out an opening that just the two switches would fit in. Uh, took a piece of this faux plastic uh, carbon material and did the exact same thing I did to get the holes in the board, but put them in the um, carbon fiber material. So now we'll just put a, a couple screws in there and uh, accomplish the same thing with a little bit different uh, different uh, solution. So anyways, those are done. Okay guys, so when setting up a radio like this, or a, sorry, a plane like this on a new radio, um, obviously all the channels have been uh, pre-routed, right? So this one goes to something specific. Now some of these are I've labeled previously. Actually, I've labeled them all, but the Futaba um, uh, input allocation is not set up like it is in JR. So essentially what I do is just have to go through and chase all these lines. Um, there's kind of some accessory lines, which is all these ones you see here. And then there's all the ones coming off of the gyro. Now, one of the reasons I specifically um, organize my gyro this way <clears throat> is so it all makes sense. 
So aileron A I always do is right, aileron B is left, elevator A is right elevator, elevator B is left, right? So we've got all these, the primary surface lines already um, allocated and set up to go. So that's gonna make it quite easy to set up in the radio. Um, and then we've got everything else, right? So I've just chased the smoke line. So um, what I do with that is go to my radio and my normal smoke channel I've got set up on aux 10. Okay, so I've already gone through and pre-programmed some of these switches where I know stuff's going to be. Um, so what we need to do is plug the smoke channel into aux 10. Now these receivers are just labeled 1 to 16. So if I go through this, um, aux 9 is channel 9. Okay, aux 10 is channel 10. So basically smoke needs to go into channel 10, which is on this receiver. So that's the process that I'm going to use to go through this. It's basically chasing all these leads, making sure they're set up properly. Obviously some of them might be reversed originally, but um, we'll have to just go through and play with that. Once we've got everything set up, set up properly, or plugged in properly, then we will go through and we will program all of the actual uh, movements and everything in the radio. So um, what I'm going to work on now is just getting all these plugged into the proper receiver ports and then I'll check back with you guys when that's done. All right guys, wiring is all complete. So it's a little bit of a cleanup here to do, but uh, basically it's all run. Um, everything's set up. Right now what's happening is I'm just uh, updating the gyro to the newest software with the Bluecom adapter. So anyways, that's happening right now via my phone, which is super cool. Love that app. Uh, anyways, guys, that is all wrapped up. So this is that piece of paper towel there is just holding this uh, antenna tube while the shoe goop cures. Um, so I've got four antennas in here uh, coming two off of each receiver. So one's coming this way, one's coming this way, one's coming across underneath this piece of wood, one's at an angle right down there and then one's going to be vertical in that little tube. Uh, same thing I did on my ultra flash and I, I haven't range tested it yet but I think it, it's a nice way to cover all axis, axes and uh, doesn't interfere with the uh, the canopy when it goes on. So um, that is basically the install guys. Everything is installed. A little bit of cleanup left to do in this area. Um, we still have to do all the programming. So that's what's happening next is all the programming for all the surfaces. All right guys, one other little tip here for you. Just full of tips lately. Um, one thing I like to do with any rattle can paint I get is I will paint it onto a piece of paper. Uh, I've also got a few strips of cardboard that I've painted it on. Basically like for all the uh, Tamiya and testers and all those things, if I get a new color, I like to do this um, just because it gives you something to actually compare it to. I mean, you, you compare the, the color that the rattle can says compared to what it actually paints is completely different. Um, so anyways, here's like Tremclad Gloss Yellow, Rust-Oleum, Tester Gloss Yellow. That's the one that I just sprayed with this can when I was spraying the, um, the cowl. So a little tidbit for you. Just make your own paint swatches and it uh, gives you something to actually compare to. Okay, you can see there, update successful. 3E's been updated. So we're all good to go. Just power that off. Unplug the Bluecom adapter and she is all updated. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the wing on the plane and we'll get it up on the stand and we will start programming. All right guys, wing here uh, has been installed. Um, elevator has come off, that little tab we need to fix that was uh, snapped off. Okay, so I've taken the elevator off. Um, that's a little tab that snapped, so not a big deal as far as re repair goes. So what we're going to do is we've got a piece of ply that's the exact same thickness as um, the existing stuff. And this is the piece that we need to replace. So I've just traced it out here, uh, roughly what it looks like. Um, this is going to be the bolt hole end. And uh, so I'll cut that out and then we'll just make a match to it and glue it onto the wing. All right guys, so the matching piece has been made. Even have a little cut out there to match the other piece and it fits just beautifully and it's nice and flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up a little bit of uh, five minute high sol and uh, 
as opposed to using uh, CA on this part. I just want it to be a little bit stronger than the stock. And also because this little tab was also built into the, the piece of ply that was uh, making up the actual elevator. And now uh, it's just going to be an added piece. So this will help to add strength and make sure it doesn't pop off again. Okay, so that is mixed up. We will add it. Put a little bit on the actual tab that we're gluing as well. Okay, and we'll put that in place. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do, um, just to make sure that none of the, uh, the high saw sticks to the airframe, is just put a piece of clear tape on there. So we're gonna reinsert this back onto the airframe. Uh, tape the uh, front of the elevator section to the airframe until it cures and then I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. Okay guys, so I've done up the wing, uh, did up the bolt lightly, uh, pushed this piece in, the, the elevator portion in, and uh, then added the tape so it's nice and snug, uh, no play. So we're gonna let that cure before we do anything and um, in probably about 30 minutes that should be nice and cured. All right guys, we've run into a bit of a problem with the analog steering servo here. Um, I've had this happen on previous planes, so when you actually retract the gear, this servo goes nuts and uh, is basically makes the nose wheel not operable. So we gotta switch this out to a uh, digital servo and we gotta do that now. All right guys, so the nose um, uh, servo has been replaced and uh, we are all good. So last time when this was uh, extending, the servo was going absolutely nuts. There we go. So she's all good. Everything runs nice and clear in there. And uh, she's nice and centered. <clears throat> so I do have my nose wheel set up on a mix. So it's on a, a bare channel, and then there's a mix. So the nice thing about using the mix is, is you can add Expo in. So it's really soft around the center. And then if you need to turn sharply at the ends, it actually, you still get a lot of movement out of it. So in the center, I'm moving it like this. And then the ends are getting that sharp, uh, sharp angle to it for steering. So I'll just show you what the mix looks like here. So it's a rudder to channel 15. So you can see around the center, it's nice and soft, and then it ramps up at point number one and point number five. So that's good. As the prop and everything has been installed, uh, that's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, the prop adjuster come or the prop adapter comes with its own uh, uh, nut or whatever plate. Anyways, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Nothing special there, but uh, beautiful um, cone on this uh, this aircraft. I love this massive true turn cone and very very accurate cuts. Beautiful. So, anyways, guys, that is done. Uh, basically, the airplane, other than um, test running the engine. Um, can, uh, doing the control surfaces uh, is is done. So uh, the cowl still needs to be painted. Uh, we've got to uh, work on that a bit more. We've got to do some sanding and, and more finish coats. So that'll take a couple extra days to, to wrap up. But uh, next thing I'm going to do is flip this plane over on the ground. We'll adjust surfaces and do a test run. All right, guys. So I took the, uh, the left elevator apart here and uh, the glue's all cleared. Took the uh, the tape that I put on there off, and uh, we're just going to paint the uh, 
the little tab black instead of putting covering on it like the other side. But uh, put a little uh, keeper on the servo connector. Now we're ready to put this all back together. All right guys, test run went really, really well. I uh, didn't go to full throttle or anything just to uh, make sure my neighbors don't uh, call the cops and complain. Uh, obviously one of the things you're looking at during the test run is for leaks and anything in the fuel system. Um, so we did have one of the Festo fittings right here that were, uh, were leaking. Um, I think it's the, uh, the four to three, three millimeter uh, adapter there, so. We'll have to, uh, first thing to do with something like that is just check and make sure that the cuts are, are square and uh, probably replace that fitting anyways. So um, yeah, that's it. Everything ran really, really well, happy with it. So next thing to do is um, we are going to adjust the uh, surface travels and finish the radio setup. Uh, we've got the cowl to uh, finish painting. Um, once the bottom portion of the cowl is on, then we'll put the smoke system back on and uh, put the exhaust uh, tips on and build is done. Okay guys, so I'll show you what I do here with the, uh, the fittings on, um, as an example, the uh, turbine ECU and then we'll also do the, uh, the transmitters or the, re sorry, the receivers as well too here. So. so everything's been sorted out as far as connections go. Um, I'll do the receivers first here. So just take a little bit of the goop there and basically we just run it across the receiver, just the top surface. And that's that. So if we do need to get any of these plugs out, we just take the goop and you peel it up and it'll come off as one solid piece and you can unplug whatever you need to do. Do receiver number two. That's done. And then now we'll do the ECU. So the ECU, we've got a couple different spots here. So we're gonna do the batteries first. Or the, sorry, the MPX connectors first. And the solenoid connectors we'll just do on the, the short end here. Data terminal, I'm not worried about that because if that comes unplugged, it doesn't matter. And then we'll do the uh, 
the RPM sensor, the thermal sensor, and then the last thing is the throttle lead, which is done. You don't need lots, but uh, that uh, takes care of the, uh, the lead possibly coming unplugged. All right, guys, hopefully the camera picks this up, but you can see the color difference there in the paint. Um, so I was chatting with the owner of the plane and uh, he's going to actually get a color match done. So this is as far as I'm going to take it on the cowl. Um, I have sanded this down one last time. So if I did have the right color, I would just paint it. And the reason I sanded it down is because I had some runs on the, uh, the lower section here on both sides. That uh, tester paint does not uh, spray very well. But um, anyway, so that's ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out the mesh screen that fits on here and give that to him as well too so we can glue that in once the paint's done because we're gonna need to paint right around the edge there. So I'm gonna do the mesh screen next. Um, for that, all I do is lay, the, uh, lay the, the cowl down like this, do a little paper trace out or cut out and, um, or sorry, trace the opening on a piece of paper and then cut it, cut it out of uh, um, uh, metallic mesh. I'll show you what that guys, what that stuff looks like. So anyway, so the cowl is gonna get uh, reinstalled. We're going to put the, uh, the, uh, the smoke nozzles back on once the cowl's installed or the lower section. And then we're gonna put the exhaust pipes on both sides and uh, that'll pretty much be it. Very excited, this plane is, uh, Almost complete. Okay guys, so here's the uh, the kidney being cut out for this section there, right? So it fits nice. A Little bit of overlap, nice and clean. This is the metal screen material. So it's just like window screen stuff, but it's actually, um, it's metal. So I don't know if it's metal, aluminum, what it is, but it's uh, nice and stiff, holds its shape really well. And it's the same thing that we used on here before. And it's also the same thing we use. There's two air inlets at the back of the plane. Uh, let's not show you my middle finger at the back of the plane. Um, we did the same thing back there. We put the, uh, the metal screen over top. So I'll lay this over top, trace it out with my white paint marker, and then just use my Cutco scissors to cut it out. Um, I'm not sponsored by Cutco at all. I just love these scissors. They live in the garage. And these scissors are amazing. You can cut pennies with these scissors. So. Love them for uh, for plane building stuff. So, anyways, guys, gonna cut that out, and uh, that step will be done. All right, guys, the cowl is installed. Um, I installed it basically permanently, but uh, the owner is gonna take it off again to paint the bottom of the uh, the cowl. You know what? You almost can't even see the color difference down there. So. The, uh, the plane is effectively done. The, uh, the sub art has been completed. Uh, the only things really left to do for the owner are the uh, cowl painting and then the, uh, the light kit um, ordered from sub art, hopefully. And uh, that's gonna be the easiest thing to, uh, to install. But uh, otherwise the plane is ready to fly. Now we're not going to CG this plane. A uh, reason being is because it was already CG'd previously and uh, everything was good on it. So we have added perhaps a little bit of weight on the, the cowl. Uh, that's not really a huge concern, but uh, otherwise guys, the plane is done. All right guys, so that effectively ends this Sebart um, crash repair video, I guess is really what it is. So. Straight ahead, so behind of you guys, behind you guys in the camera, I'll show you. I've got my next project uh, that was delivered yesterday. All right, so these massive boxes here contain something special. And it's going to be a fun build. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek, you ready? There it is, that's all you get. All right guys, so that'll be the next big project in the queue. Uh, it's a full build video, so brand new plane, brand new everything going in it. Um, I'm gonna do an unboxing video. Uh, it's already been opened, but I'll do the unboxing video just to go through all the parts and show you guys what's what and uh, give you the full detailed view. So that'll be one of the next projects coming up. 
Uh, I do have a couple videos coming up before that. Um, I'm planning on doing my, uh, my radio setup on my Ultra Flash. So that'll be coming up as well too. Um, that's why I didn't show you any of the, the radio setup portion of this PC21. So, um, but that's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you how to program the jet uh, start to finish uh, from a brand new, brand new plane. So um, hopefully you guys will find that useful. And I've got some other ideas coming up for videos as well too. So thanks guys for tuning in. If this is your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And lastly, guys, um, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. So thanks for tuning in. We will see you in the next video.